Hi guys, this is me, Erica. Uh, hi from me and my sock microphone. Um, so today will be a different topic, and it's something that's really dear to me. It is going to be about films, most particularly analog photography, 35 millimeter photography. So occasionally, from time to time, I would look between the camera as well as here because my iPad Pro is here. Before I begin, I think it would be the best way to start this video with a trip down to memory lane. Between three to four years ago, I was cleaning the house and I found a lot of, you know, these cameras. And they're not the cameras that we have now, which are DSLRs. They are film cameras that my dad owns as well as my mom. Film cameras walked so DSLRs could run. What's up? <laughs> Back then in his days, uh, when he was still like a teenager, a uni student, uh, he joined this photography club and that's when he found a passion for photography. Unfortunately, Destiny was not on his side because even though we always, you know, have needed connections to succeed and, you know, climb the corporate ladder or social ladder, blah, blah, blah. Back then, it was much more intense because social medias weren't a big thing. Big thing. <laughs> weren't a big thing. Because he didn't have any connections at all, he had to give that up. And now he's back with a lot of, you know, film cameras in his closet and with a job that is not in the creative field. These cameras are now passed down to his daughter, which is me, unless I'm adopted. Here we are. <laughs> so in this video, I'm also going to talk about the shops that I go to to develop my negatives and great beginner roles. I will also talk about how I transitioned from using disposable cameras to a rangefinder camera and sometimes an SLR. So film photography comes in small format, medium format, as well as large format. Particularly today, I will focus on 35mm because that is the best way to start with your film photography journey. So what you would need is a film roll as well as a camera. Just like relationships, you know, you just want to test the waters first. Waters, damn. Test the water first and see if, you know, that person is your type or if they didn't pass the vibe check. Similarly to film photography or any hobbies, you would just want to get the gist of it first. And in order to get the gist of like film photography, I would really recommend getting the cheapest film roll as well as the cheapest camera that they have in the market right now. Get a disposable camera. Disposable camera is just like disposable. <laughs> it is what it is. Once you're done with the with that film roll, you could either reuse the machine or like the body itself or you could just toss it away and get a point and shoot. Disposable cameras nowadays are like 100 plus. You could just get them in like any camera shops in Hong Kong. With disposable cameras, you usually get 27 to 36 exposures and that means you get 27 to 36 shots in total and once you're done with that, you immediately cannot see the photos because you would have to go to a film lab for their negative films it takes like two to three hours to develop as for black and white films on the other hand takes two to three days because the process of black and white films are much different than color negative films and that's like a whole another mechanics um whole another different machines a way of you know processing the film and so forth Once I was done with my disposable camera face, I decided that yes, film photography, as Mary Kondo would say, sparks joy. Uh, so I really wanted to level up and I asked my mom for her camera. She passed down this device to me, which is the Konica Zayup Super Zayup 70 Super or Zayup Super 70. I don't know. This is like more than two decades old. It's older than me. My mom bought it. It's really simple as well. You don't really have to think much about it. So you just have to load a film inside. Sadly, I cannot show you guys what it looks like inside because I have a loaded film in it. Usually, the cameras like point and shoots would load the film for you so you don't really have to do a lot of manual stuff. This one doesn't have like interchangeable lens as you guys could see. This one is great because it has like 35 to 70 millimeter lens. If you want to learn about photography as a whole and you want to start with film photography, you would learn so much about digital photography as well it's like learning the guitar before you learn the ukulele it's really decent it looks very hip very retro um, and vintage looking <laughs> 
And then I was done with my point and shoot phase like after a year or two of using this for this next camera thankfully i didn't have to you know buy it or else i would have to sell my kidney for it because due to inflation since we live in a capitalistic economy and i was actually saving for that same brand and same model and he had it thank you papa jesus with you know a lot of people loving film photography nowadays obviously people would take advantage of it and make everything more expensive because that's how business works baby but this one i have is a contax g2 it is a rangefinder camera a rangefinder usually has like a built-in machine that can detect distance between the person the photographer and the object with interchangeable lens meaning you could change the lens unlike the one that i showed you guys previously the lens i have right now is the 35 millimeter carl zeiss lens carl zeiss is really well known in the photography world in general because i think if i'm not mistaken he makes the leica's lenses and leica hasselblad or like pentax are like the rolex of film photography they're like the top tier it's a prime lens so you cannot zoom in zoom out the price point now is like for the body itself is 5k and the lens is like to something 2k it can be an auto setting or manual setting you have the best of both worlds everything is great about this camera it looks sexy as fuck usually my images like 90 percent of the time comes out really sharp and crisp looking however for the other 10 percent it really comes out blurry and that's another issue with like contacts so this camera doesn't really nail the focusing all the time so there's like always an issue with the autofocus so it really depends on luck so you just have to pray so now i've decided that because of the focusing that's been turning me off with the contacts g2 and a lot of these men on bumble and tinder I wanted to save up and buy an SLR camera. So an SLR camera is a single lens reflex camera. So the difference between a rangefinder and an SLR camera is that the rangefinder, when you look at the, you know, the viewfinder itself, like this is the viewfinder. Please don't get it twisted between a rangefinder and a viewfinder. A rangefinder is what you usually see on the viewfinder is not necessarily what you would get as a final outcome. However, as the SLR, what you usually see on the viewfinder is what you usually get. I decided to buy this one, this Canon A1 program. This retails for $1.9, almost $2K, and I bought this in Hong Kong Image. Not only you have a control on the focusing, but you also have control on the ISO. ISO determines the amount of light that you get. So lower ISO meaning there's little light that could go through your camera, and more ISO meaning there's more light that could go through the camera. With higher ISO comes with more grains or like, you know, the noise and speckles. This also has a battery inside, but the battery is not for the purpose of, you know, turning on the camera, turning off the camera. It's for the purpose of the light meter that's inbuilt in this camera. So if you don't have batteries, this will still work. The lens that I currently have right now is the 50mm f1.4. camera it's a camera that i've never gotten to use because i would have to change like the o-ring so this one is a nikonos film camera it's by nikon the lens that i currently have right now for this one is a 35 millimeter f 2.54 underwater photography next i'll talk about the flash for point and shoots disposable cameras you don't really need a flash for like you know range finders or slrs flash is not inbuilt in these you know camera bodies like the canon a1 program it doesn't have a flash as well as my contacts g2 and the nikonos so you would need to separately buy a flash the flash looks like this it's a really tiny you know Thing. and you need like battery for this to function now i'm going to talk about the shops that i go to develop my films or just to buy film cameras as well as film rolls usually when you you know develop your films um they would ask you if you want a soft copy a hard copy or both obviously if you want both it's definitely pricier if you want the soft copy, they would ask you to provide your WhatsApp number, email address, and then they would send you the G Drive folder and you have to download that folder because if you just, you know, keep that folder there, there, <laughs> if you keep that folder there only, they would delete that folder within a week or two weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Once they've sent you the G Drive and you could access it, ax oh, you can access it, please don't forget to pick up your negatives at the store. 
then usually your negatives are, are available within three hours. Firstly would be Dotwell Photo and TST. They've been there for like more than two decades or even three decades if I'm not mistaken. Secondly would be Hong Kong Image. It's also in TST, walking distance from me. They're youngsters and then they could speak like English. So if you don't know Cantonese at all, that's like no problem to you. Compare between Dotwell and Hong Kong Image, the prices are more or less the same. In order to develop or just scan negatives, it costs like four to five dollars. Um, if you want to print them, that's like an extra 30 to 40 dollars. If you want to buy their film rolls, it's also like more or less the same. And other shops that I've been to is show up. They're cool, they're chill, they can speak Engl English as well. Also, Camera Film Photo Hong Kong, and it is based in Changshawan. I think the owner is an Indian guy, and he is friends with um, Big Head Taco. And he works for Cinestill Film, so it's pretty cool. They're really innovative in the sense that they provide darkroom classes. If you want to learn more about film photography more in depth, you could check them out, Camera Film Ho Photo Hong Kong. Yeah, I was also going to talk about like film rolls, um, so I am. But I don't have like any of these film rolls because, you know, I leveled up. <laughs> As a beginner, you would definitely want to purchase the cheapest film roll that your local film lab would have. And that would be like a Fujifilm C200. It's very cheap, definitely cheaper than $50. Kodak Color Plus uh, 200, less than $50. What, 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 what? Oh, yeah, I have this right now. This one, I don't know if you guys could purchase this like separately, but this is the Lomography um, 400 and it comes in three, more saturated than your usual films. However, don't be discouraged because of the saturation. I, I still think it's a really great film to play with. I think this retails for 160 Hong Kong dollars, making it like more than $50 per roll, but that is still on the lower side of film rolls. Another role that is like great for beginners because it's really cheap is Kodak Pro Image. I haven't used it, but my friends have. It's less than fifty dollars if I'm not mistaken. As well as Kodak Gold, which I've used. Kodak Gold two hundred. However, it has more of a orangey, yellowish, brownish look. You can always experiment with different film rolls. So I guess those are like the rolls that I really recommend to beginners because they're cheaper. If you're feeling more experimental, you could check out Double Film. You could also like check out Black and White Films, Kodak 400TX and Ford HP5. So it comes down to experimentation with film photography to find out what machine or like equipment works for you. So I think that is pretty much it. Please don't forget to follow my photography account, Anal by Erica, because it's you know short term for analog. Oh, that was like really witty, and I would always cue a sexual innuendo if I could. Everything will be listed in the description down below. If you guys really enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumb. This is the. Please don't give it please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and share it to your friends if you really find this informative. And I hope at the end of this video, you guys will be convinced to give film photography a shot. <laughs> Pun intended. Bye guys. See you guys next time. Period. Okay, I'm actually really confused. Like I don't think I'm allowed to use like A V African American vernacular English. I'll try not to use it. I'll do my best. <sighs> oh shit, I forgot to do that.